Hi, and welcome to this video on working with Shopify Webhooks using the Shopify API. In this video, I'll be creating a Shopify Webhook by making an authenticated call to the Shopify API. I will then generate a Webhook URL that allows me to receive my Shopify Webhooks in my local development environment. I will also be inspecting the headers and payload sent with the Shopify Webhook. Excited to follow along? Let's jump right in. To begin the tutorial, I'm going to be getting you familiar with the requirements and the steps we're going to be taking to achieve our setup. The first requirement is a Shopify store account with admin access and the ability to create apps. We're going to be creating a Shopify store private app in order to get the keys to interact with the Shopify API. Next, you need the Ookdex CLI installed. You can find installation instructions here and then a locally running API server. I have a Node.js server running and I'm currently in the code base. This API has three endpoints. You have the base endpoint, then the endpoint that logs our Shopify webhooks, which is this log Shopify webhook endpoint. And the last endpoint is an endpoint for fetching the logs. So these are our three endpoints and we're going to be creating a webhook URL to target this endpoint. So let's go through the steps quickly. First, we generate a webhook URL because we needed to create a webhook on Shopify. Then we create a Shopify app to get the API access keys. Once we have that, we can then use the Shopify API to create a webhook on Shopify for the order create event. And then we test and inspect our webhooks. Now that you're all caught up with the steps, let's get right in. The first step is to generate a webhook URL that points to the log Shopify webhook endpoint. And this application is running on port 1337. So I'm just going to copy that because I'm going to need it for the ookdeck CLI command. To generate a webhook URL, run the command ookdeck, listen, then supply the port, which is 1337. Hit enter. Tells us we're not connected to any account because I'm not logged in. So we're using a guest account. What should your source label be? I want it to be Shopify. Next, what part should the webhooks be forwarded to? Like I said earlier, we're going to be forwarding our webhooks to this endpoint. So I'm just going to copy it. Go to the CLI and paste. Then hit enter. Connection label, you can give this anything you want, but I'm just going to call this my Shopify order API or logger. Let me just call it logger. Hit enter. And as you can see, we get our login URL for the guest session and we get our webhook URL. To have an authenticated session, I'm going to copy this login URL and paste it in my browser. Once you see connected on the side menu, you know you're good to go. The next step would be to create a Shopify app and get the keys. And that's what we're going to be doing next. So let's head over to the Shopify dashboard. Yeah, my Shopify dashboard. And if you have access to apps, if you have permissions to apps, you will see this apps link. You click on apps. You also need permissions to be able to create apps. So if you don't have those permissions, you won't be able to see this manage private apps link. Which I'm going to click right now to create a new private app. As you can see, we have no apps at the moment. So I'm just going to click this create private app button and start the app creation process. The first thing to provide is the name. I'm just going to call this purchase API logger. You can give this a name you want, any name that makes sense to you. Developer email. I'm just going to stick my email in here. Yeah, in the admin section. You need to expand this show inactive admin permissions because this is where you assign permissions. By default, no permissions are assigned. I have permissions for different items like analytics, customers, discounts, draft orders. But the ones we're going to be concerned about in this tutorial are the order permissions, which is order editing and orders. So I'm just going to click this drop down and give it read and write access. I'm going to do that for order editing and do that for orders. Read and write access. Good. Now you can scroll down and we can select the API version. We're okay with the latest. The latest is fine and allow this app to access the front. We're not using the storefront API, so you don't need this. So with all the details in, let's save the application. And we get this prompt that says that we're about to create a private app and it to generate API keys. So we should make sure that we store these keys and make sure that these keys are not available publicly so that you don't give access to unwanted individuals. So let's just click create app. 
and now we have our application and we have our api credentials here in the api in the admin api section you can see your api key your api password for basic authentication your api key is your username your password is your password yeah and this password also is the access token is shopify's access token it represents shopify's access token and for verifying your webbooks you have your shared secret with these credentials we now have everything that we need to interact with the shopify api now that we're done with steps one and two, let's go on to step three, which is to create a webbook subscription using the Shopify API. And that subscription will be for the order create topic. You can interact with the Shopify API in code, and you can also use a standalone HTTP client. For this demo, I'm going to be using Workbin. Workbin allows you to interact with SOAP and REST based APIs. To create our Shopify webbook subscription, we need to point to the Shopify webbooks API. And that takes the format of your store name. So I'm just going to copy or your store address. Store address. I'm going to copy that and paste that here. Slash admin. Slash API. For slash the version of API that you're using. For this demo, we're using 2021.10. That's the version we're using. For slash webhooks. Dot json good so it's your store address forward slash admin forward slash api then the api version 2021-10 webbooks.json that is the structure of the shopify webbooks api endpoint our request method is going to be post and we need to set a standard shopify header to authorize with the shopify api so i'm just going to go to the header section and enter the x dash shopify dash access dash token header this header sends our access token to shopify and authenticates us against the shopify api and like i said earlier your shopify access token is your store password is your private app password and that's what we have here so you can just copy that and we can paste that here so here we have our shopify access token you can confirm that this header is registered by clicking on the raw section and you can see the header here the next step is to enter the payload that sets up our subscription this will be written in json format in order to bore you with watching me endlessly type i'm just going to type the payload in and explain the details later so here is our payload for creating a new webhook and I'm just going to explain the details one by one. So we have this payload object and within the object we have a webhook property. And this tells Shopify that we're about to create a webhook. And this webhook property is also an object and it contains properties like topic, which is what we want to subscribe for. We want to subscribe to the orders create topic so that when an order is created on our store, we get a webhook sent to our destination endpoint. We also have the address property. The address property is simply the webhook URL. That is the one that was generated using the Ugdex CLI. And then we have the format with which we want to receive the webhook payload, which we have set here to JSON. With the required parameters complete, you can then click send and wait for the response. And we get a successful response. 201 created. Our webhook has been successfully created. We have our webhook ID, the address, the topic, and we have a whole bunch of other details, mainly metadata sent by Shopify. So we have successfully created our webhook. So now that we have successfully created our webhook using the Shopify API, we can then proceed to testing it. We created a webhook for the order create topic, meaning that when an order is placed on our Shopify store, we get a webhook sent to our destination URL. So to test that, I'm going to be creating an order by going to the orders page. And here I'm going to click on create order in order to generate a new order. And I'm just going to search for product. I know I have a jersey here, so I'm just going to pick this 76 hours Ben Simmons jersey and click add. I'm going to select that I'm going to pay later and then click create order once this order is created i should get a webhook on my endpoint 
get a prompt here that says this will create an order without payment okay this this is because i chose to pay later so just going to click create order to complete the process and as you can see order created we have our order created so we should have a webhook registered in our hookdex cli session let's go ahead and check that as you can see as predicted we have a new webhook registered in our cli session and there are a couple of interesting details here like the status code returned by our api which is 201 meaning that our webhook was successfully logged the request method for the webhook which is post shopify sends webhooks as post requests and we have the endpoint that was targeted which is the endpoint that logs our webhook and the final item on this entry is the event url this is where we can view a page that shows us details about our webhook so i'm just going to copy that and go to chrome ensure that this still shows connected i'm going to open another tab and paste in the url as the page loads up we see some metadata here by ookdeck and we have an header section where we can inspect the headers that came with the webhook we have our webhook id we have the topic that was subscribed for which is the orders create and we have other generic headers like content type content length and we also have this hmark header here which is used to verify webhooks if you scroll down you can see the body section where you can inspect the payload that came with the webhook here we have a lot of details for the item that we purchased let's scroll down i think there's a line items okay yeah there's a line items property here where we can see details about the jesse that was purchased so we purchased the ben simmons jesse and there was no discount bummer and the price is 199 if you scroll down you can also see the attempt section where you see the number of times you have attempted this webhook and the status code this is the one attempt that we made and if you click it you get this message this is the return message from the api that says that the webhook was successfully logged to confirm that our webhooks are indeed being logged let's visit the second endpoint or the third endpoint on our api which is the fetch webhook logs endpoint let me get that just copy that to avoid typos um yeah good fetch webhook logs i'm just going to go to firefox and open a new tab do local host colon 1337 which is the port on which our application is running and paste the endpoint as we do that up we can see our webhook being logged the, the first entry is a test entry so you can ignore that but this second one is the one that we're actually logging we're logging this webhook data that was just fired we have the generic id that comes from mongodb which is the database that this application is using then we have the webhook id which is gotten from the header if we go back to our event page and we scroll to the header section you can see this same header right here ends with a 475d so that's the same thing we have here and we also have the timestamp we have the line I total items that was purchased which is one which is the ben simmons jesse that we purchased and as you can see our webhooks are being logged successfully in this video we have been able to use the shopify api to create a webhook subscription and receive it in our local development environment if you have enjoyed this video please leave a like and you can subscribe to our channel for more videos on shopify webhooks and webhooks in general happy coding